right, welcome everyone. My name is Haley Buckner and I'm the Professional Relations Manager for Elevate Oral Care. Thank you for joining us this evening. Before we start, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. For those of you remaining online past 50 minutes, your CE certificate will be emailed within hours of the completion of this talk. So be sure to check your spam folder. You're all muted, so no need to worry about background noise. We will have time at the end for questions and you can submit your questions on your webinar dashboard. They will be tracked throughout the talk. Over the past two years, we have held a series of free live CE webinars on many pre prevention topics. Each of these webinars were covered, were recorded and are available with free self-instruction CE online at elevateoralcare.com slash elevatingcare. Be sure to bookmark that page and return often to see what's new in free CE. And also, if you have a topic that you would like to see covered, feel free to suggest it by sending an email to info at elevateoralcare.com. For tonight's talk, we are honored to have Dr. Joyce Kong. Dr. Joyce's main source of marketing for her dental practice is from, Insta from her Instagram following, so we are sure to learn some great tips and tricks for you all to utilize social media to help grow your practice. Dr. Joyce Kong is the owner of Orange and Magnolia Dental Studio in Orange County, California, and is also known on Instagram as at Joyce the Dentist. In 2018, she started her Instagram account and to date has grown it to over 41,000 followers. She graduated as a dentist when she was only 23 years old from the University of the Pacific School of Dentistry, completed a residency at Jacoby Medical Center, and was faculty from 2014 to 2020 at USC's School of Dentistry. Most recently, she was awarded as a Forbes Next 1000 honoree and a top dentist in 2022 by Orange Coast Magazine. She posts weekly tips for the general public to improve their oral hygiene. Be sure to check her out on social media. Dr. Joyce, we are excited to learn from you this evening and the floor is yours. All right. Is the slideshow up? <laughs> Not yet. It looks like it's low. It looks it looks like it's doing something. But Anthony, you have any idea there? Hi, Dr. Joyce. Uh, are you in presenter mode again? There How we go. There we go. Okay. Yay! Perfect. Hi, everyone. Second. All right. I'm really excited to be here. Um, thank you for the intro. Again, my name is Dr. Kong, and I'm known as Joyce the Dentist on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about my social media journey, um, particularly what I've learned and what works for me specifically. And that way you can take this info and tailor it to you. So again, I went to UOP and graduated in 2010. I own my own practice, which is a boutique styled cosmetic and restorative practice in Costa Mesa. And I started my Instagram account back in February, 2018. And I'm proud to say I've consistently posted at least once a week during that time without missing a week, with the exception of my maternity leave. And I didn't really know that much about social media in the beginning, but um, my account to date has 40,000 followers. And although I have other social media accounts like TikTok and YouTube, this is the one account that actually drives patients to my practice the most. So I thought we'd focus in on Instagram. All right. So I wanted to start this off by painting a picture of my work situation in 2014 because I'm not like a special person with extra knowledge in social media. Like I have no training in this, no background. I literally graduated from dental school and had no clue how to market my practice. So I took over a small, like a longer standing, like 50 year old two chair practice. And there was a small base of patients enough to cover my overhead. Um, the previous owner was an older male, and the practice is kind of like oddly situated in a small neighborhood. So the visibility is not the best. <laughs> Looking back, I don't, I don't 
quite know why I chose this practice, but I was really drawn to it. It didn't make a lot of sense, but um, you know, once you take over something like this, you just have to make it work. I think the hardest part of taking over a practice like this was that I was met with a lot of resistance from the patients that came with the practice because they were so used to an older male dentist. And although I had the credentials, they were, it was hard for them to see past <clears throat> the, the petite package that I came in. And I kept, you know, I would mention, I've been practicing for four years, but for a lot of them, it was just really hard for them to see past that. And they kept saying, I look like I just graduated from high school. So I wore my Ferragamos to work every day and uh, I dressed really professionally for work, which is something that you always have to do when you look young, you have to like overcompensate for things. And I worked really hard on trying to grow this practice, um, kind of like how my ancestors had. So traditional marketing, internal marketing, flyers, Yelp reviews, like I really buckled down and tried to grow with zero understanding of marketing. And I know that stuff works, but I don't think that I approached it the right way back then. Um, to be honest, the growth was really slow for me. And the traditional methods that I, I was trying were not giving my office the momentum and the visibility that I needed. So I did open an Instagram account. And when I did, I didn't know what I was doing. I really had nothing to lose. All I knew was that it was free and we like free. So today, 70% of my new patients come from Instagram, which is something I never really expected. And I do very little marketing otherwise. All right, we've kind of talked about my knowledge of social media, which is pretty much none. I didn't really understand it. And I actually thought Instagram was like a photo sharing and filtering app. And I remember thinking it's kind of like a website, but then once I signed up, I realized it's not like a website. You have to keep posting things. And that is, I think, one of the most stressful things about Instagram is that it's not like you just build it and then it, it, it lives there. You have to keep posting things and being active and coming up with content. And um, this picture on the screen, that's the first picture I ever uploaded. It's just two xylitol lollipops and it got like 36 likes. So anyways, the point of the story is that it's okay if you don't know what you're doing when it comes to social media. I mean, it doesn't have to come intuitively to you. Um, there's a little bit of learning as to how it works. And for me, it really didn't come intuitively at all. I know that it doesn't seem like that when you follow me on social media now, but I really hated the way I looked when I would take selfies. I was really self-conscious about that. Um, I hated the sound of my voice. And I didn't even know what a hashtag was. So I've come a really long way. And fast forward to now, I'm really glad that I stuck with it. And I was consistent with it because it's transformed my practice. And by no means do you have to be as active as I am now, uh, because I do a little bit more than just using social media to bring patients to practice. I do a little bit of like working with brands and stuff like that at this point. But for the first two years, I didn't do any of that. My social media was really primarily just to um, connect with patients. I think the most important thing is building a strategy when it comes to social media. Um, well, let's go to the next. And then this is pretty much the last slide about me. One, one thing Instagram has done for me is to help potential patients understand who I am before they even come to the office. And these days, people come wanting to see me, which is so different than only in 2014, they didn't want to see me. So now people come to me and they don't assume that I've just graduated from high school. They see me as an expert. And that is really crazy. Um, I took over the business when I was 28 and now I'm 35. And I don't think I look that old. So I, <laughs> I feel like um, social media has helped me a lot. And Instagram is now my business card. It's how a lot of my patients follow me. They tag me in their accounts and they interact with my posts. And then when they tag me, their friends come in and it's like a whole thing, which is like super fun for the culture of my practice. And of course, 
um, one of the most important things is, is social media has helped me with my visibility. My visibility is now independent of my physical location, which is great because my rent is cheap and I'm not paying an arm and a leg for like really high visibility on a busy street. So um, I kind of took that poor location thing and flipped it around and now it really works for me. And I think fi being findable is what it's all about. So I want to ask you, are you findable? How easy it is for people to find you? How easy it is for the person who is looking for a dentist to find you? And how easy is it for people who are not looking for a dentist to find you? Okay. Now let's dive into building your account. When I first started my account, the biggest roadblock was that I didn't know what to post. Like I didn't have good pictures to post and uh, I for sure didn't want to be cheesy. There were other dentists that had sites or Instagram accounts, but their images were really cheesy. Like it said, like, come book your appointment with us. And I would look at that and I'd be like, who is going to come in? <laughs> so I was like, that's not what I want to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. If you have been following me since the very, very, very beginning, I actually started my account by posting before and after photos of smiles that I took with my iPhone. And the reason I did it like that was because I was following this one doctor, Dr. Simon Orion, who is the Kardashian's Botox and filler doctor. And I wanted to model my account after him. But I noticed that, that the teeth photos were attracting mostly dentists. And I do love my dental people. I think it's really important to have that community, but that's not who I was necessarily aiming for. And um, at that time, to be honest, I, I think, I was kind of embarrassed of the quality of the photo that I was putting up online because Instagram is like your portfolio and I didn't want to start posting photos that I wasn't super proud of the quality and I didn't want to start posting those until I learned proper photography, which finally I've, I've learned. But um, so I started trying to figure out how to reach a more broad audience rather than just the dental audience, which is which I still wanted things to be targeted, but I, I needed to reach more people than just my dental people. So I started seeing what my favorite bloggers and influencers were posting. And um, I started like noticing what I follow on my personal Instagram. Like this person over here is Mariana Hewitt. And I, I love her account. Um, it's super aesthetic and She's like one of the OG bloggers. Um, it's a fashion, lifestyle, and beauty account. And I love how she she posts things like about her hair and random things. And I'm interested in those things. And so if she told me to go buy a Dyson Airwrap, I would buy it, even though she has no particular credentials like a doctor. The problem is that I quickly found that this style of posting, like a blogger style, it's, it's not going to bring patience to the practice. Like she writes here, this fall, I'm into a sleep blowout. What hairstyle are you, right, are you into right now? So I could never get away with that. Realistically for me, posting a photo like this is not gonna drive patients to the practice. Also, I, I guess I, I never really look this cool, but it's okay to take inspo from like your favorite non-dental accounts and figure out why their content does well because dentistry I think is always a few steps behind and so you want to get um, you want to like start noticing what is trending out there that it's not dental related because at a certain point dental is going to follow along. So the point about Mariana is what works for somebody else is may not work for you. And you have to figure out a style and strategy that is authentic to your personality. Because I'm pretty sure that there are people here watching right now this webinar who are thinking, I would never post this. And I'm pretty sure there are people here right now that go on my Instagram, they're like, I would never post the things that she posts, or would you even want to? And I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just saying that's what works for me and I've tested it. So um, you have to be really self-actualized about uh, what works and if it's, if it's really bringing the patients in. 
and kind of like the social media image that you're putting out there because whether we like to say it or not it is a highlight reel and when it's for your business it's actually more of a portfolio so quick word about outsourcing i know a lot of people do want to talk about outsourcing because you're just like really really busy um you may have big practice already and i know it feels easier just to outsource social media because it feels like a different language and it's like really complicated but i'm a firm believer that your social media strategy is best represented by you um, personally when i see an instagram page that's managed like completely managed by a company i can tell and i think people in general can tell and the content is usually pretty generic there is not a lot of personality to the page and I would dare say that it's almost a waste of your time. It's a waste of your time to pay somebody to post things that are not converting to your business. And um, yeah, I think that this is what scares most people and overwhelms most people about social media is that the time spent on this platform could be endless. <laughs> and it doesn't necessarily drive or uh, equate to patients coming in through your door. So you could spend all day on Instagram. And a lot of you probably think I spend all day on Instagram, but it doesn't mean that those people are going to come in and it doesn't mean that you're even gonna grow your following. And you could post a hundred posts, but it doesn't mean that you're reaching eyeballs. So the harsh truth is it's not enough just to show up. What Instagram is, is it's just a platform, it's a vehicle for you. And you really have to be very strategic about what you post and how you go about it. Otherwise you're gonna waste your time. So when I talk about outsourcing, I'm not saying don't outsource things at all. I'm saying if you're paying someone to do your social media and you're noticing that the follower count is going up technically, but there are no patients coming in through your door, to me, that is money being wasted. So if that's happening to you, then you just have to re-strategize. You have to step, step back, build a strategy that is authentic and converts because follower count is not what it's about. You can easily buy followers. It's very, very easy. Um, so I want you to take your eyes off the follower count and I'll kind of go more into this um, in a few slides, but I'm gonna deconstruct what actually worked for me back um, a while ago. So. Um, Instagram has actually changed a lot in the last few years, but this is the basic building block of an Instagram post, which is a static picture. You can also make carousels where there's a bunch of pictures in that one post, but my general rule of thumb is I have to start with an eye-catching visual, whether it's of myself or whatever else I'm posting, it has to be eye-catching and high quality. But I, I would say that when I first started this account, one of the I think side eye criticisms that I would get from others in the community is more like, why is she just always posting pictures of herself? Well, you may think I'm a narcissist <laughs> and maybe, I, maybe I'm a narcissist. It, I mean, whether I am or not, it doesn't really matter. But actually I post a picture of myself because I'm marketable, so why not? And then most importantly, I am the easiest person to take a, a photo of. I'm available to myself all the time. Whereas like if you're really wanting to take pictures in your office and you do a fake model or like you're taking pictures with your staff, you have to coordinate. It, it's, it's a hassle to do those things. And for me, if I need to take do a photo shoot or something like that, I just take pictures of myself and it's super easy to get content. Not only that, another thing people don't really realize is I own all of my own licensing rights and that's important. So as far as the picture that you post, a few things to think about. I try to keep the quality of the photo high. It should be crisp and eye-catching. And this may sound really silly, but I think this is where a lot of the dentists actually mess up. It's um, not really focusing on the picture and focusing more on like the knowledge in your brain, which goes into the written part, the copy. But the problem is if your photo doesn't cause somebody to stop scrolling nobody's going to read your copy so it all starts with the photo other tips keep the photo bright and light instead of dark um, if the photo is of you make sure your face is a focal point and 
my biggest advice right now, because Instagram has changed so much, is mix up your feed and try different types of posts out and find your groove. For a while, my account was mostly all photos of me because that was doing well. But these days I have more of a mixture because I'll ask people on my stories, like, what do you like to see on my Instagram feed? And people were like, I like it when it's not super, super like um, matchy matchy. So now I have a mixture of reels and of before and after photos and pictures of me. So mix it up and make sure you stay flexible mentally to the feedback that Instagram is giving you or like the people that are on there is giving you um, and be willing to change the strategy if needed. Now the copy, let's elaborate on copy. And the copy is basically like the written portion, all these words, all these words. This is really how you connect with your following. Unlike Mariana Hewitt, which is that blogger that I showed you, I spend so much time writing these sagas and I make my husband read them sometimes and my husband complains all the time that I write way too much, I talk way too much and nobody's gonna read it. But guess what? My husband is not my target demographic and my target audience would read this. So who is my ideal patient? It's a 30s to 40s female, entrepreneurial, she's a working mom, She's not afraid of Botox or filler. She it wants to be savvy with her money making decisions, but she can go to Chanel, Chanel and buy a new bag if she wanted to. Um, she cares about her health. She, you know, is casual, wears athleisure, but it's like expensive. Um, drives a Tesla or a Range Rover. It's very, very specific. It's actually very similar to me. So when I thought of who my ideal patient is, like somebody who's willing to spend money on cosmetic procedures, it's me. That made this whole thing so much easier when I was um, trying to figure out what to post to attract this type of person. Yeah, so overall, my ideal patient has a good job, takes accountability for her health, cares about the way she looks, she cares about her family. This is actually the ideal patient for a lot of people. So it's, it's going to get competitive when everyone tries to start getting this type of patient here. And how do I know that my posts work? Because I have a business account and I check my analytics. I see the gender breakdown, I see the age, I see where they're located in the US and I am right on target, which I should be because I'm creating content with a strategy and a purpose to attract this type of person. Um, yeah, like my husband doesn't follow me and he would never follow me because that's not the type of content that I'm putting out. So this next part, I'm gonna, I wanna do some copy makeovers <laughs> and Let's see, let's see copy that I see very frequently on Instagram and convert that to something that captures people's attention. So this is a really popular type of post that I see from dentists. And it's a post that they put up after going to the Coist Center, which is like, if you don't know what the Coist Center is, it's this very, very expensive CE course that is like over $10,000 that has like a cult-like following. And dentists love posting this picture with Dr. John Coyce after going and putting like a little copy here, like, oh, I went to the best CE course. So these people, I don't know who they are. I just looked up hashtag Coyce tribe and um, I'm not, I don't want to knock them at all because their Instagrams may not be to gather or garner patients. So it's not about that, but um, yeah, like I do love how they're, they're very enthusiastic and they, they have that desire to learn and they're really proud to go and of their accomplishments because that's how I felt when I went to Kois, but I did not write my copy the same way because I find that patients don't really care that much about you going to an expensive C course and spending 275 hours on continuing education. So this is what I wrote when I went to the Kois Center. <laughs> this photo just cracks me up, but um, I wrote, I'm feeling proud because I invested in myself this week. Again, you don't need to read the whole copy. That's basically what I'm saying. And it, again, it's really wordy, but instead of explaining what I learned in the course, which is meaningless to patients, I wrote about what I learned as a person. So this was actually written to speak to my ideal patient, the woman, the mom, the career woman. It's about balancing life, mom life, work life. And it's a message that choosing yourself never gets easier, even 
uh, it never gets easier, but it's even more important once you become a mom. So that's gonna speak to a lot of people. Um, it's It touches on emotion more than the actual facts. And if you notice in my copy here, I wanted to point out, I put my career has been a culmination of choosing myself since I became a doctor at the age of 23. You can plug in little things about yourself to make you stand out as a professional. And I do that because even if, if you've been following me for a long time, you might be sick and annoyed of the fact that I say that I'm 23, I was 23 when I graduated the dentist, but people who are new to your page don't know that about you yet. So you have to always keep in mind that the people coming don't know you. You have to write things as if this is like their first time reading, especially like, look at this photo. It looks like I'm, I just graduated from dental school. So you have to put some of those things in. So I thought that was important for you to, to uh, understand. My advice overall for writing copy is to stop making things about you. It's not a dental diary. I know when people read my copy, they think I'm writing a dental diary, but that's not the case at all. Um, it may look like that from the outside, but you're writing to appeal to your ideal patient and evoke some sort of emotion. And you will see that at the end of every single one of my posts, I end with a question. It's some sort of, how did you feel when blah, blah, blah happened to you? And I turn the conversation back around to them and make it about them. They can start thinking about how this is this applies to their life. So everything that I do is deliberate. It's about, it's about growing those connections and really building community. And this is how I maximize my impact while I am on Instagram. Rarely will I post something just because I'm bored and it's fun. <laughs> so... Um, yes, I do curate my feed. Now, cur curating kind of has a negative connotation to it um, because it sounds manipulative-ish. But the women I want as patients generally like a curated feed. It's like how you can go to a boutique store and they curate all the outfits to a certain style. So basically, if you pick one outfit, it's going to match all your other outfits that you buy from there. And I'm not saying that your feed has to be super aesthetic and perfect like Mariana Hewitt's, but the feed does, does have to be like cohesive in that the content should appeal to that woman. It doesn't matter if it's a professional photo or you took it on your Instagram. Um, yeah, it just needs to appeal to that woman. And I also want to take this time to clearly explain that there is a difference between creation and curation. So when you create, it's entertainment and you're gonna grow in fans. But when you curate, you're posting with a purpose and that's when you attract followers who convert into actual patients because it's value driven. So for that reason, again, 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 you gotta take your eyes off the follower counts because Let's be real here. There are a lot of accounts out there that's going to grow faster than your dentistry account, like bikini photos or interior design, photos of food, fashion. But so like if you really want to compete and like really want to grow fast, your your eye is being taken off the ball. It's it's not about the follower count. Um, it's <laughs> you you just want to really focus on the patients that are coming through your door and making sure that your account is trending towards growth. And I'm going to go over that a little bit more because I know a lot of people have Instagrams that are stagnant and what that really means for you. So when figuring out what to post, here are a few examples of what I mean by creation. <laughs> Me, the hygienist, assistant. So videos with the team show like your team culture. And it's super fun, by the way, um, to do this with your staff if you have like downtime. But it doesn't really bring value to someone who's looking at your Instagram. So along these lines, it's pictures of your baby, pictures of your dog, what you ate for lunch. Here's another example of creation. Oh. Oh, 
Okay, I will just narrate that for you then. It's like a it's a video of me going like how do I even? How do I even? Let me see if it works. So it's this sound clip that I found on TikTok that's saying, I, I'm catfishing you because I look like I'm six foot, but I'm actually five three. And that's something that a lot of my followers actually tell me all the time is like, oh, I thought you were six foot because of your pictures, you look so tall. No, I'm actually five foot three. And so this is funny content. It's it's like filler content that is funny for the um for the people that already follow me, because it's kind of like a joke, ha ha ha, but it doesn't provide any value for my potential patients. All right, and then this is a type of creation that I think is actually really important. I like infusing these throughout my account because um, it, it's a way to connect with the people that follow you. Little by little, people, people start to get to know who you are in the absence of dentistry, and it's super important because they people want to do business with people they know like and trust so i'm not saying creation shouldn't be on your instagram it should be on your instagram but the ratio is important like if you just have a bunch of these photos like what patient's going to come to you this is an example of curation so i hope this video works um but this type of video it was, is what provides value to my ideal patients. And I actually started leaning into videos because I didn't have pictures to post and patients would ask me about something in the office and it was like really hard for me to show them at the spot. So I would make videos and now I have a video for almost every frequently asked question. And when you put up a video that one of your patients asked you and they follow you on Instagram, you're really, really building that connection because they feel like, oh my God, you, you made that video for me. And yes, I do make these videos for you. Um, you're just like, you just go above and beyond. And it's great because if one person has that question, another person has that question. So. <laughs> I'm glad that video worked. Okay, so let's go to the next one. This is another example of curation, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's it's made by somebody else, but you are able to put all of these videos onto a highlight onto your Instagram. And so if a new patient comes, you have all these like glowing testimonials of people who love you and your services. Uh, so let's play, let's play Brian here. So excited, I'm gonna go to the dentist. I love going to the dentist, and I not only am I going to the dentist, but I have the best dentist in the world, Dr. Joyce. Shout out to her. She's awesome. Best ever. No cavities. That's a win right there. <laughs> Woo! So watching that always cracks me up because he's just like this in real life. But he has a business in the area, and so if he's posting this on his Instagram, I'm being shared with all of his followers at all. At, at, all of his followers as well and i can keep this on my instagram for people to see all the time it's like a glow it's like the best type of yelp review um and then let's go to this one over here all right guys here are the results Whiter than my shirt. My dad just did an amazing job. Um, I'll drop her Instagram. You guys can find her so that you guys can do the same thing. Care of me as a patient, and I'm so excited at the results. Like, look at this. Like, I feel like I have a brand new smile. So, yeah, glowing, glowing reviews. But let's say that somebody, like, let's say that Erica here said something really horrible about you, like she hated you, and she shared that with all of her followers, you don't have to repost that onto your, your page. Your page is your page. You have all the control. So this is Yelp, but better, because you, you control what people see, uh, and you get rid of the caring. And then obviously you can make videos like this that showcase your work. Oh, who got you smiling like that? Like, 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 I mean, that's, that sort of thing is priceless. Okay, 
So let's talk about content ratio. This is the content ratio that I usually try to stick with and you don't necessarily have to, just like everything else in my presentation, you don't have to do things the way that I've done it, but I want to peel back the layers of how I did it so you can take away the parts that you want to. So 70% of my posts, I try to keep educational or inspirational. Um, and I think both education and inspiration is valid. And I don't, I think it's important to let you guys know that inspirational content and storytelling is really, really, really powerful. Don't underestimate it because how many times have you been on Instagram and you reshared an inspirational quote? So that is one of the emotions that I'm, I always try to put in my copy. Now it doesn't have to be like a photo of me and then you write some like uber inspirational stuff. If you are a cosmetic dentist, you can put a before and after photo and make it educational, make it inspirational, right? Like, oh, this girl came in and she's been so embarrassed with her smile, blah, 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 blah. 20% um, of what I post is the stuff that I, I'm like kind of telling people I'm an awesome dentist or kind of curating in a salesy type of way, which I don't like to say the word sales, but it's kind of like that. So for me in particular, because I have more of a um, branding account or um, what do you call it? A, an, influ an influencer type of account. I put my ads in this 20% because I don't want to bombard my patients or potential people with ads. It dilutes my message. So I keep it 20% or less. And then 10% is personal. So it's good to come off as a real human. Keep in mind that you are sharing, not selling. So I guess everyone has a different uh, perspective when it comes to this, but my strategy is simply to take up the real estate in the viewer's mind by just showing up every day, popping up every day, all over the, all over the place. And my goal is to make people perceive that I'm always on Instagram. So that's my strategy. It's to show up and remind potential patients that I'm still here. And the great thing about this strategy is not like, hey, I'm like, hey, come to my office. I want to be your dentist. I need patients so bad. It's not like that. Instead, I am just existing in their world. And I just remind people that I'm the dentist that they've been wanting to go to just by popping up on their feed every once in a while. So no matter what, I never, I never let another dentist occupy that real estate in a patient's mind. It's all about real estate. Um, and whether they come in right away or it takes a while by popping up, you're always taking up that real estate in their mind. So when someone thinks like, oh my God, I need to find a dentist, they should think of you first. Okay, let's get into the meat of this. So I know that this is a very popular question, social media delegation. How much time do I spend on this platform? This really depends on where you are in your career, what you want to make of this Instagram. Like I said, you don't have to spend as much time as I spend. I spend probably more time than the average person. Like, let's be real. If you have a bigger office that's pretty established and social media is just one more thing to add, then you can outsource certain things. If you have a smaller office and you know you're just trying to get your new patient flow up, then this is something very easy that you can do for yourself. And personally, I create everything myself. It's not because I'm not a busy person. I am a mom, I have my own practice, and you know, I'm very, very busy, but I have a control problem. And I actually, <laughs> I actually like creating things. And I think that's very apparent by the way I show up on Instagram. Um, so I create everything myself. On Mondays, I spend one hour just batching two to three reels. So I always have something ready to go for the week. It's like meal prep. As far as pictures, I have a whole album of photos that look just like this one where I'm wearing literally the same thing. And I have um, three photo shoots a year so that I always have a photo to post if I, if I ever need it. And when inspiration strikes, then I write copy. Uh, I also think it's nice to post more of like an everyday photo because people tend to like that. But, you know, for me, my husband is not one of those people that's just going to grab the phone and take a picture of me so that I can put it on Instagram. I really have to be like, hey, can you take a picture of me right now? And it's a whole ordeal. So I like having the photo shoot. 
The part of Instagram that I love the most is Instagram stories. That's where people really build a connection with you. Like how many of you have DM'd me and I've responded? And I try really hard to respond to my DMs, but um, sometimes I don't, but I do try really hard, hard to do that. It's like one of my goals to do. So I post on Instagram stories morning and night, at least once. Like today I was slammed at work, but I posted at 5.30 in the morning of me just with my coffee. It's a selfie. It's like, that's all I could manage to do today, but I did it. So the reason you do it morning and night is because when you post again at night, you come back up to the front of the stories feed. Um, so that's why I do it. And again, it's all about making it feel like you're always there. A thing I wanted to make a note about stories is stories are where people really get to know your personality, but sometimes, you know, I'm a slob because I barely have my makeup on a lot of times. I'm taking care of the baby. And so my goal with mine is I keep my my post, my feed, like the main Instagram with all pictures and stuff, I keep that pretty polished. So if you're a brand new person looking for a dentist, you don't come up, come across a slob. But on my stories is where people really get to know me. And um, if you just start watching the stories, like you really get to know me. I'm always surprised by how, how much people get to know me. Um, the stories are very, very important. Things to delegate, things that you can delegate is, I think you can really delegate any content creation, but in particular, you can create, you can delegate content creation that's made in your office. Like for example, you can have someone come and help you videotape smile makeovers. Yeah, let someone else do that. It's okay to delegate some content creation as long as you are the conductor and the orchestrator of it all. Don't let, let people come and create content and just post it without like you really knowing what's going on because that is your name out there. You don't want just random stuff that's, that doesn't reflect your personality out there. The other thing you can delegate is if you have things batched like I do, you can have somebody else actually post it to your Instagram and engage with it. Why does it, why is that important? Do you feel like that's a weird thing for me to bring up? It's really important because you don't just post things and go on with your day. You posted it. So people are going to start interacting with it and commenting and you need to respond and say, well, thank you for taking your time and commenting on this post. So you have to engage with people. I think that's a really big missing key for many people when they start Instagram. Your post is not just so good that everyone's gonna love it, like, 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 and comment on it, and then <laughs> you're just too good to just leave the comments. I mean, once you get a little bit bigger and it's hard to keep up with all the comments, that it's reasonable that you don't respond to every comment, but at least I spend at least the first hour after posting trying to respond to those comments in particular. And the last thing that I do is I have a college student repost everything for me that I make on other platforms like Pinterest and YouTube because Instagram is not super searchable. And if you want things to be um, searchable, then you want to put them on platforms that are searchable. I think that's pretty much it for delegation. You guys can ask me if you have any more specific questions about delegation, but I think that's how you kind of like do things, but also keep it your own. Okay, if I were to start over today, what would I start with? Instagram has changed a lot since I first started. So I used to have a very slow targeted growth. I would post those pictures with long copies and it, it was a very slow growth for me. Um, but those people that were following me are very, our relationship is very, very strong. These days I can grow much faster with reels. So if you guys don't know what reels are, I'm gonna go over this. It's gonna be like a, an interactive session, but there is a trade-off of growing with reels. Reels improves your overall reach aka new eyeballs to your content. So if you feel like you're posting things, but nobody's coming to see it, then I know that's really frustrating. Reels is where to go. I've noticed that ever since I started posting reels, I'm getting more followers and more views. And here's the thing though, the followers are less my ideal patient type. 
and the net is more broad. So overall, you're getting more views, but they're not really here for you. They're here because your reels were a combination of entertainment and value. So how do you transition that and make them come into the office? Um, you are getting more eyeballs overall, but they're also like random people. Not to say that they won't come into your office. So I think, I think it's worth doing. I think of Rails kind of like a gateway drug. Um, they're like fun and innocent and they make you become a lot more exposed to people you would have never been exposed to. But then people will start to get to know you on your stories and on your reels as you keep posting more. And so they'll get sneakily addicted to your account. Plus they're really easy to make once you get the hang of it. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it and how I pump these out in one hour. <laughs> and I hope this helps you guys. I don't expect you guys to do it this way, but this is how I strategize that time. But to go back about reels, um, I see reels kind of like a growth phase. Right now, or when, when I first started my Instagram, I was posting like once a week, that's it. And it was a very slow growth, but I consider that to be a building phase. Like I'm building, it's like when you have a, a business and you're reinvesting into your business and you're really targeting those followers. But right now is a growth phase. And what I mean by that is you're getting a lot more views and the growth phase is a huge opportunity, which is why I'm posting reels like three to four times a week right now. It's because I'm on Instagram enough to, to sense the trend. And the point I'm trying to make with this, even though it sounds really verbose, is that there are seasons of Instagram. It's not all about the quality of what you're putting out. It's about being part of this platform and knowing what Instagram is wanting to push out. So if you've been posting consistently, like static picture posts, and it, it feels like you're just like slowly growing or plateauing, then you gotta, you gotta like lean into what Instagram wants you to do. It's the algorithm, like we hate that word, it's the algorithm, but it's not just about your content. Your growth is directly in proportion, directly related to whatever Instagram wants it to be. So the seasons of Instagram. So right now is a growth phase, which is why it's a huge opportunity for you to start Instagram because you can grow much more quickly than when I started Instagram. And that's why I'm leaning into it. Whew, okay. So this part, I want to go over with you my Instagram strategy for making reels really, really fast. Are you going to see my face in this? No, yeah. Are you guys seeing like my face in this too? Not okay. anymore. Oh, yeah. not I anymore. See. How do I make my little face show up at the bottom? Shoot, how do I go back? Ah, can somebody help me? <laughs> we can see your webcam and your slides. But not the um, Canva, that? Can you see this? And we see uh, your webcam and a white screen. Okay, one second, I'm going to do this again. I know how to fix it. Don't worry, Anthony. <laughs> okay, can you see my face though in, in the thing? Because I want to show you my phone. Yes, we can. We can. Okay, perfect. So I want everybody to do this. Open your Instagram account and then go to this little button down here. That's the Reels tab. And so you're going to see a whole bunch of Reels here. And I want you to scroll through these Reels until you see this little arrow down here. On the bottom left. So once you find something that has a little arrow down there, you're gonna click on the sound. 
click the audio and then click to use that audio. Then you're gonna be able to film something. So film something really quick. <laughs> film something really quick. <laughs> that would mean. Okay, so that was what I filmed really quickly and I'm just doing nothing, but you could do like this and then hit next. And then what I do usually is I just save it as a draft. Um, I just make this with a blank template of me, that's a video, and then later on, I'll put the word into it so that it's educational for people. And that's the type of thing that I can do when I'm sitting in the playpen with my one-year-old. Uh, but filming the content, sometimes you just need like a little bit of extra time for that. So I save it as a draft and I'll go back and put the wording. But once you put the wording in, then it kind of looks like this. <laughs> Okay, so that's how I do it really quickly. And then I save three of those at least. I'll just go through and then find trending audio. That's what the arrow means, it's trending audio. Then I will film something to do with the trending audio. And then I'll go back and put some words in. It's really fast. This whole thing took me two minutes to make for you guys. Oh. Okay. We're still gonna talk about reels, but let's talk about collaboration over competition. For some reason, dentists, we don't, we don't like to collaborate, <laughs> but you're not gonna blow up by yourself on Instagram. Um, you really need your dental community. And this is all about the point that I was making earlier is, is that you may think that what you're posting on Instagram, like that reel or that post with that copy is just so good, but nobody is, just so good that you just explode out of nowhere. Um, I mean, there are very few people who do that that just end up going completely viral. But for most people, that's not how it happens. And so in order to get eyeballs to your Instagram, you do need to collaborate with each other. That means posting something, responding to comments, going to one of your colleagues' pages and then responding to them or like commenting on one of their posts. So like be interactive and build a community that you support. I think that's really, really like the key because um, without going too far into it, Instagram, if nobody is commenting on, on your post, Instagram registers that as like, okay, this is not a very, very good post. We're not gonna show it to as many people. And soon they are going to switch back to it being a chronological feed, meaning, the way that it was posted like if i posted first and you posted second then i will show up first and someone else will show up second it used to be chronological it's going back to chronological but for a while it was not about what order you posted in. it's about like what it seems like people are interested in so if you just post it and you leave it and you're not responding to the comments um, and people get discouraged from commenting on your post because you don't ever respond then instagram is going to take that as like people are not interested in your post so it's a little bit of a game and it gets a little bit more complicated than that, but on the surface, that's what it's kind of doing. Here's an idea that is new. Like I said, you wanna lean into the things that Instagram is doing that are new um, and that they're trying to promote because you wanna be on season with Instagram. So try making a video with your specialists. I mean, it's a little bit extra work, but it's fun and you're sharing direct audiences. So I wanna show you a, um, a video I recently did with Dr. Rochelle Beebe, and I actually love her. <laughs> I She's like one of my favorite people on Instagram right now, and she is great. She actually grew her Instagram so fast. It's amazing. Just doing reels. Like within the last year, she grew to 36,000 followers. So there's a lot of growth to be had with Instagram reels. And if you do something like this, where you're, you're doing collaboration together and making a video together, you can post it together and the reel gets shared to both of our audiences. So let's say that she was a specialist in my area and all of, all of her, her followers were watching the, the video as well. I mean, we're pretty much gonna be locally in the same area. It's a great way to get exposed. So this is the video. 
That's the video and we did a collaboration and it was a really good video. Like I actually had a lot of fun making this video, even though it is a lot more work than just doing it by yourself, but it's impactful. So how to collaborate? You're gonna go to this little area up here and then you're gonna go make a reel. And this is just a picture of me <laughs> just posting. Um, and then you're gonna go and tag somebody and invite a collaborator. And I collaborate with Dr. Rochelle Beattie. So um, one note, if you're gonna do this and save it as a draft, that doesn't work. You actually need to put in the collaborator fresh. So when you're ready to post it, then you have to invite that person and do it fresh. Cause I, did, I made a mistake when <laughs> we posted ours and it just tagged her and didn't put her as a collaborator. And that wasn't the point of doing this. So that's that. And then I want to show you also the transition, like one transition that we did, because one of the things about a reel is that it needs to be somewhat entertaining. It needs to grab your attention and transitions help you do that, whether you're doing it with somebody else or whether you're just doing it by yourself. So transitions are a lot easier than you think. Um, so these, this is what the transition is broken down. This is my little clip. I'm just taking the body pin back, clapping. Then you can see that Dr. Rochelle Levy is clapping already. She starts there, she opens that, and then let's put that together. So it's actually so, so easy, but it's fun. Um, you, you don't have to do this with another person. You don't have to transition with another person. You can transition anything. Like sometimes I just clap, and then I'm in a different outfit when I come back. So you can just really have fun with it. And keeping things visually visually stimulating is really important because you're competing with a lot of other accounts, like I was saying, that capture the attention of people. And I don't know where dentistry is on the spectrum of what general people want to watch. So by keeping things very educational, but also entertaining, you are capturing their attention. Also, I happen to follow this one account, Pink Sparrow Social, for more transition ideas and tips on Reels. Um, no relation to her, but that's someone I follow. Anyways, I know that it's very scary to do this. And like I said, you don't have to do things the way that I do it, but you kind of, I want you to start thinking about what is authentic to you. There are so many collaborators out there. Um, doesn't have to be, like, let's say that you're a guy there are so many guys on Instagram and TikTok that are just killing it. And they're doing educational content too. They're not just like, you know, being hilarious or with a, with a shirt off. They're actually bringing in patients to their practice with Instagram to get inspo from your colleagues because they figured it out. And when you see something that's successful already, you can deconstruct it and make it successful for you as well. And I know that if you're here, it's because you know that this is something that is important to your business, especially moving forward, because social media is not going to go anywhere. It's just a matter of um, doing it and having courage and figuring out a way to be really smart about your time, because you don't want to waste your time on this platform as well. All right, that's it. So feel free to DM me if you have any questions. It's at Joyce the Dentist. And thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Dr. Joyce, for an excellent presentation. We do have a few questions that have come in here, so I will uh, I'll ask a few of these. Um, some of these, I believe, you've asked, you've answered in a, a little bit already, but I do want to elaborate more on this. Uh, you said that you always answer with a question, um, and that typically elicits response from the followers. Do you have a system regarding responding to those posts and to the comments? Do you allow your staff to repo comment on those posts? And how do you handle negative comments? Um, okay, that's a loaded question, huh? I, I respond to all my comments by myself right now. Oh, there I am. So I, I respond to all my own comments. Um, it's important to me because I want to know what people are thinking. And a lot of times when I want comments, it's because I spend a lot of time writing the thing. So um, I do respond. I'm 
in the process of setting up a virtual assistant that can help me respond to comments specifically for ads because sometimes I work with brands and I'm not able to tend to my phone at the times they want me to post because I'm working. <laughs> so I have someone who will respond to those and keep the comments going. But otherwise, everything, everything up till now, I've been doing myself and I really think it's important to, at least in the beginning, just make sure you respond and thank people for coming and spending time with you. Um, as far as my sequence for responding to comments, I try to respond to comments in the order that they come in. And that's that's the reason for that is because sometimes your life gets in the way. And so you start commenting, responding to comments. And then let's say that your baby just like pooped or something. <laughs> you have to go and then you don't know where you left off. Then I just put them back in order and I see where where's the last comment that I left off on. Uh, negative comments. It depends. Sometimes I get a negative comment that is completely warranted um not completely i mean i think everything is about tact so they didn't really mean it to be negative or to be insulting and those i'm more than happy to respond to if it's really really negative in a bad way it depends sometimes i just leave it and i don't respond to it like part of my personal boundaries is i don't respond to things that make me feel bad because this is supposed to be like my land i think of Instagram as the land I have created. Like I was saying, it's the Yelp without the Karens. So um, Karens, there are plenty, but they don't need to exist on your Instagram. And if they continue to harass you, I just block them. They don't get the privilege of coming and learning free dental stuff. Um, and then if they're like really, really horrible, then I don't know, I, I play by ear, but just remember to protect your, your time and I used to let my ego get like the best of me and like really try to like <laughs> go at them and be like, you're wrong, I'm right. But in the end, it's not worth your energy. Excellent, appreciate the answer there. Uh, the next question is, do you duplicate content across platforms and do you post, or excuse me, do you use the boosting options on many platforms? Ooh, I've tried boosting on Instagram. It didn't do anything for me. So I don't recommend that. Weirdly, I have also, um, I feel like I do pretty good on Instagram without any ads. So last year, one thing I tried doing is doing an Instagram ad. It made sense to me that that would do well because I already do well on Instagram, but that was a complete waste of time for me. And for a lot of people that I've talked to that have done Instagram ads, it hasn't worked for them. So um, that was just my experience. I'm not saying it doesn't work. What was, oh, as far as duplicating content, I, I'm i not the best at it, but I do duplicate certain things. And the reason I do that, I used to duplicate way more. I used to duplicate my TikTok and put them onto Instagram. Um, and you have to go through a process of removing like all the TikTokness of it because Instagram doesn't want TikTok to be reposted onto Instagram. But I noticed that the content I put up on Instagram is very different from the content I put up on TikTok and it does differently. So the things that would do well on Instagram don't necessarily do well on TikTok. And TikTok is its own beast. Um, I do have my, she's like a college student that is a pre dem So she reposts a lot of my TikToks onto Pinterest and onto YouTube. But most of the time, my Instagram reels are hard to repost onto like a, a YouTube short, because if you notice Instagram reels, they're really, really short and you just go like do, do, do. And it says read the caption to make the people read the, the bottom part. And it doesn't tell enough of a story in the actual video. And so I find that those are a little bit harder to post onto Insta Instagram or YouTube shorts. I made different content for each platform. These days, I'm I'm just posting the things I think will do well on that platform, on that platform. But I think it's always worth shooting your shot and doing all of it and seeing what um, each audience likes because the audiences are different and you have to cater your stuff to the audience. Very good. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, the next question is, is there a point that you've reached where there are too many posts or too frequent posts, or is there a system like Canva that you use to schedule your posts? 
Um, so there's Planoly. Planoly is a third party app that will post things for you. I don't do that. I think it's for me, I think it's a control thing. I want to know that when a post goes up, I put the right tags, I put the right hashtags and things like that. And when it's up, it's up. Um, and I don't think that the posts that are planned by third party app do as well. I think Instagram knows somehow that it was like artificially posted. So I don't do that. I post everything by myself. What was the second part of that question? Uh, oh, is there was, a point you're posting too much? Yes, too frequent or too much. There's there's a trade-off. So I think the general rule of thumb is that posting more is encouraged. But as far as like vanity metrics, if I post once a week, then I will get a lot more likes and follow or likes and comments on that one post because you just have one and it's showing up all of a sudden. But if you have like one every day, you're going to get way less individual likes and comments on each post. But the thing is, you don't necessarily need to pay attention to that. Um, I think posting more is usually what people recommend. I know that for me, when I post three reels, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, oh my God, I'm so sick of myself. I hate seeing myself. Like, I don't want to see myself anymore. And when I see another reel of myself, I'm like, no, please, no, please. And I almost feel bad that like the other dentists that are following me might feel super annoyed, which I, I'm, it, it gets old, like, let's be real, but I'm not posting for them. I'm posting to garner a new audience, um, reach new eyeballs. And so I, you always have to keep the big goal in mind and not be so like, you know, shy about things because you're there for a purpose. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And with that, we'll close it out. I'll hand it over to Haley for some closing comments. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Joyce, for a wonderful presentation this evening. And thank you all for joining in. To our guests, your CE certificate will be emailed automatically within an hour or two. So be sure to check your spam folder. And also be sure to follow us on our social media. We've got Facebook and Instagram for leaks, links to new free CE events. The link that you can see on screen gives you access to our archived webinars, including this evening's webinar, which should be accessible in just a few short weeks. So you can rewatch Dr. Joyce's tips and how she explains to do those reels and all of her wonderful posts. And be sure to share this link with any of your staff and colleagues. And finally, on our Elevate Oral Care website, you will find buttons to request an informative CE eligible staff meeting for your office. Education on the latest evidence in oral health prevention is what we do, and we would be honored to meet with you and your team to help you best serve your patients. So thank you all. Stay safe. Have a wonderful rest of the week and happy new year, everyone. Bye.